Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 9. Tesla made record high deliveries in Q1. GM and Ford announced how many vehicles they will be delivering in 2026. <coughs> Cybertruck pre orders just gets bigger and bigger, and the race is on for charging your electronic vehicles in under 10 minutes. All this and much more to come on today's episode. Let's dive right in. Q1 deliveries. Tesla did deliver 88,400 cars in Q1, a 40% up from Q1 of 2019. And they did produce almost 103,000 cars, even with this disease going on. So very impressive that Tesla keeps the delivery this high, even with the Freeman closed and the Gigafactory 3 was closed as well for a couple of weeks. We of course have to say happy birthday to the car that changed everything, the Tesla Model 3. On March 31th, it has been four years since the Model 3 was unveiled. The car that almost killed Tesla, but they went through production hill and came out on the other side and now is a big success story. Happy birthday, little Tesla Model 3. Let's celebrate with a little video clip of Elon Musk. What, what were the thoughts back, back then? What were some of the comments? Uh, let's see, uh, <laughs> the internet is forever. <laughs> Um, it was a, a mere like taste. It was like, like I said, it, it was, electric cars were considered extremely st impossible and stupid, uh, and, and in various forms. The you know, you're a fraud. Bah. It was like okay, you can drive that fraud. <laughs> Tesla, made in China, Model Three is also flooding the streets of Beijing, as we can see here on this video from Tesmania, looking good. Tesla Cybertruck pre-order numbers could be above 622,000. They are not going to be able to keep up with the demand for this truck. Tesla will sell as many Cybertrucks as they are able to make. This is just going to be a huge success as I talked about before. And Cybertruck's potential demand in China may rise after the national government lift a ban that kept pickup trucks outside cities. Multiple major cities in China have banned pickup trucks from entering densely populated urban areas to prevent air pollution. However, China national government may lift this ban in all major cities soon, meaning maybe even more demand for the Cybertruck. Tesla becomes the best-selling car brand in Iceland. Some people were independently importing Tesla's vehicles into Iceland, but Tesla wasn't officially selling there and offering the service. That changed in September 2019 when Tesla officially launched in Iceland and started taking orders for the Model S, X and 3. Tesla has since opened a store and service center in the country and the first shipping of vehicle has arrived in March. Tesla ended up delivering enough vehicles to make Tesla the best-selling brand in Iceland so far this year. And I think Cybertruck is going to be massive in Iceland as well. It is just the perfect country for this truck. That is not so good news for Ford, who is almost only going to produce pickup trucks and SUVs. And speaking of Ford, GM and Ford as I just made a whole video about, you can check it out here, just announced they will make about 320,000 electric vehicles in 2026 combined between the two companies. <laughs> ah, check out my video for more details on that one. Tesla Model 3 also became the number one top selling import car in Korea and also was the most sold car in my country, Denmark, in March. There is just so much demand for the Tesla and I understand why it is such a great car, fun to drive, no maintenance, get better over time and connected to the internet and it's very green. And I even got a little more green because we changed our energy provider. It's called Vinstel, translated to Vingust. And the reason why I did this is because all the energy they provide is 100% from windmills. You can see an overview of all their windmills on this little map. 
Yes, that is all of Denmark covered in little green windmills. Yes, we got a lot of windmills. Actually, about 45% of all Denmark's energy comes from windmill alone. So now I can sleep a little better knowing I'm supporting the windmill energy and my Tesla is filling up with 100% wind. Tesla Model Y has received some positive first impression from noted auto review firm Edmunds. In a recent set of tweets, Edmund had some good things to say about Tesla's latest vehicle for several critical factors, including its driving dynamic and its big storage area, as well as its spacious cabin. The Tesla Model Y also has a more powerful powertrain than the Model 3, as Drag Time showed in his video. I'll link it below. It also shows it actually has a little bit bigger battery as well. Five kilowatt hour more than the Model 3. Probably because the Model Y is a bit bigger, they put in a little bit more juice to get closer to the range of the Model 3. Take a look at Drag Time's video to take a deeper dive into this topic. And being the fastest electric car in the world is not enough for Tesla. Therefore, the Model S and Model X launch mode was added in an update. Launch mode is a quick start mode usually found on powerful supercars. When it is activated, controls is transferred to the computer, which provides efficient accelerations from a standstill. At the same time, wheel slip is minimized, maximum traction is activated and power is optimized. If you want to see a drag race with the updated Model S performance, check out Matt Watson from Kawao's new video. It's always good fun. Here he race against the Lamborghini. I will leave a link in the description. And a quick update on the Tesla Gigafactory 3 in Shanghai. The phase two of the Gigafactory foundation is finished. And it looks like the phase two is going to be a bit bigger than the phase one. They are just continuing to push forward with lightning speed. And good news for SpaceX, because SpaceX competitor OneWeb files for bankruptcy. One less competitor in the race for satellite internet. Not so good news for SpaceX is the latest pressure test on the SN3 also failed. That is the third pressure test failure on the Starship. Hope they have learned a lot and are ready for the fourth. Tesla bids to deploy on the biggest battery in the world with 244 megapacks in Hawaii. The proposed project is going to be capable of storing 810 megawatt hours of energy and discharging in a rate of 135 megawatt. To put it in perspective, it would have more than six times the energy capacity of Tesla's 100 megawatt hour power pack project in South Australia, which was the biggest battery in the world when it was completed a few years ago. Tesla releases Dashcam viewer software update, allows Tesla cam and sensory mode viewing in the car. That is just awesome. You can see here how you can see all four cameras and choose which one you want to see on the big screen. Can't wait for this one. It is just so cool and something again only Tesla can do with an over-the-air update. And you can see here how the Tesla is also able to see the end of a dirt road with the update 12.1. Tesla is getting better and better and Waymo's cars still look like something a kid has drawn. Just can't believe this is the second best thing on the market for self-driving. Tesla is just in a league of its own. Speaking of software, Volkswagen and Daimler is in discussion to cooperate in the operative system of their battery electric vehicles. In parallel, Daimler is also in discussion with BMW about the same topic. Volkswagen is still having trouble with their software for the ID3, far away to be ready for the market. The future of the smart car is software and Tesla is just in a league of its own. The other guys can't even get it to work yet. Want to charge your electric vehicle in five minutes? Well, several companies are on the way to do just that, so charging time can be as little as five minutes. As Wired detailed in a look into the EV charging tech, a new frontier in the lithium-ion battery is XFC, or Extremely Fast Charging. Companies like Californians Innovate, Israel's Stardot, England's 
each on are all working on solutions that would allow these batteries to charge in under 10 minutes, replicating the experience of a gas car. The problem is, of course, real-world implementation, but it is nice to see so many companies trying to get there and not just Tesla, so bring on the competition, it will help us all. That is all we have time for in this news episode and thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I come out with a news episode like this every Sunday and of course other Tesla videos in between. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for the support and a big shout out to all my patrons helping me produce these videos. Thank you so much guys. And until next time, take care there and be nice.